In a prior video, we covered some of the major economic changes coming in both Point 2 of Thrawn's Revenge and Fall of the Republic. We've also covered many of the new government mechanics for factions in the Point 2 version of Thrawn's Revenge specifically. While there are a ton of other galactic level changes to both mechanics, maps, and AI in these versions, I wanted to take a moment to highlight some of the major ones relating to some pre-existing government mechanics, resources, and galactic infrastructure. First, on the government mechanics side, we've made some quality of life changes to the New Republic, Republic, and CIS governments. For the New Republic, while we felt the Chief of State mechanics have landed pretty well, and we're generally happy with the breadth of effects so far, especially with some changes to specific ones coming in point two, the elements of winning the election were not quite as interesting since you generally have enough average influence to win regardless. While ultimately it's not a hugely impactful change, we've made it so that your chosen candidate will always win the next election, putting the focus back on the presidents themselves, rather than the question of getting them elected, which some people seem to be focusing more on. In the future, if we decide we have a worthwhile way to make them lose and a compelling thing to do if you lose, we'll reinstate it, but for now we think the breadth of options is more important. In Fall of the Republic, the government changes for this version are somewhat more impactful. For the CIS, we've always wanted to have a bit more feeling of progression on raising sub-faction loyalty, rather than getting all rewards from integration at the same time, and having everything only happen once you get to 100% influence for the sub-factions. This can especially be an issue on smaller maps, where getting to 100 with any individual sub-faction would either take a lot longer, or just not be feasible in the space of completing the Galactic Conquest. To help smooth this out, we've made it so that all successful missions or influence purchases on a sub-faction will integrate a planet if they have one left. So rather than getting a whole chunk of territory at once when you hit 100, you'll slowly get each planet, and if you reach the 100 mark, that's when you'll unlock the heroes or other unit integration elements, like getting Porus Tonneth for the banking clan. You still likely won't be getting to 100% on smaller maps, and we're generally fine with having different levels of impact for different map sizes like that but it should mean that these mechanics play a bit more of a role even on those smaller maps. Similarly, on progressive maps in particular, the sub-faction AI was quite aggressive when playing as the CIS. Often they'd be able to win large chunks of the map for you in point one, making it questionable how much you'd even want to integrate them, and taking away some of the onus from the player on actually playing the game. We've made several adjustments to the sub-faction AI to significantly reduce their aggression when on your side, making integration more attractive, and returning the responsibility for crushing the clones to the player. On the Republic side, the road to Order 65 and 66 would often change in difficulty each version based on specific changes to influence availability, and this also meant on small maps where you had only a few high-influence planets, you'd be able to make the choice almost immediately, while making it near impossible to reach on some larger maps. To fix this and make it a bit more manageable for us while putting more emphasis back on completing missions or taking proactive steps, we've made it so that the way you increase centered influence is by completing missions or taking planets directly. For both the CIS and Republic, we've changed the starting values per map or by map size, as well as by era start, so everything on the government side should feel a lot smoother in terms of pacing in general. As with the other government mechanics, these will continue to be fleshed out and expanded on as we go through future releases as well. Next up, we come to resources. First, we have ship crews. Ship crews are currently still not the most impactful as we want to let the rest of the economic changes sink in before we start doing too much with them, but we have been able to make some significant quality of life changes there as well, thanks to last year's Empire at War patch. In the current live builds, if you can't afford a ship crew's cost, it simply won't show up on the build bar. This was because in order to lock them out, we had to use dummy structures as prerequisites. So if you had X amount of ship crews, you'd have that dummy structure there, which would allow you to construct certain ships. If you didn't have them, it would be taken away, which meant that the ship wouldn't show up. This had a bit more of a load on the CPU, and it also meant we only had 12 different prices to work with because we didn't want to add a bunch of other structure levels because that would increase the load on the CPU even more. Now that every faction can have their own story scripting though, which was not possible before last January, we've been able to move to a much more efficient and flexible lock system. For players, what this will mean is better performance, unique prices that we can determine on a per ship basis, which we haven't done quite yet, and when you can't afford a ship, it'll be grayed out instead, the same way as it would when you can't afford the ship's credit cost, rather than just disappearing completely like it does in current releases. All of this should help make working with ship crews be a lot more intuitive for players, especially new players to the mod. Secondly, we have food and parts. 
The introduction of food and part resources were done largely as a way to add some drawbacks for blitzing, so you would have to build up your planets a bit more before taking the next planets, which meant that the AI would have a chance to recover and allow you to have more of the big battles that we're all kind of looking for with Empire at War. The plan there is also to give us some extra hooks for planet management and story events in the future. While it did accomplish this, the fact that its effects when you were lacking in resources was a universal influence hit meant it was both a trap for new players who often ended up losing a lot of planets without being something that we could build around ever actually going into its downsides, since it could mean losing the game if you spend more than a couple weeks with an influence negative there. Effectively, that meant it was a binary state where we were only able to use the positive state as the one that we could plan around. Now, instead of being a direct hit to influence everywhere, when you're lacking in food or parts, you take a significant hit to build speeds and costs. This should make it both more forgiving for new players and something where we can make it more impactful in its downsides, because we can plan actual opportunities to use the downsides actively without it being an immediate risk of losing the game leaving more possibility to set up other story events, or even plan galactic conquest scenarios that are based around the idea that you're starting at a significant negative and have to build up from there. In the future, being in the negatives for a resource or other emergent situations will be able to spark per-planet crises hitting influence or other factors, but for now, we're sticking with the impacts as they are. Hopefully this will address some of the complaints that some players have had about it while keeping the good sides that it does bring to the table. Finally, we've made some changes to how orbital structures are handled. Because of how many of the mods' mechanics rely on the use of dummy structures like I was talking about earlier with the former iterations of ship crews, they're basically structures that we spawn on a planet for a specific effect that aren't actually structures you'd interact with per se, we're not generally able to use built-in limits on a planet for secondary structures like golems. Otherwise, these dummies would count towards that and it would throw everything out of whack. This has meant we aren't able to do much with structure types, as you're able to build a golem of each level, plus a shipyard, plus a trade station pretty much everywhere. Instead, we're now grouping structures by category, and you can only have one type of structure from each category on a planet, not counting the main star base. So for example, if you have a golem 1 on a planet, and then you build a golem 2, the golem 2 will replace the golem 1 instead of having both of them. Right now, these categories are economic, which is currently just the trade port, Construction, which groups different shipyard types with the ship market for the CSA together, and defenses, which are the different types of golems or other combat stations. With these changes in the future, we'll be able to add different categories or structure types within those categories as we go, allowing us to be a lot more flexible and have a lot more variety in the types of stations we're able to add. On that note, we've also made some changes to the defensive star bases for the CIS and Republic in Fall of the Republic. In prior versions, the structures matched the ones from Thrawn's Revenge, which actually meant that with the 200 unit pop cap, structures were proportionally stronger per level than they would be in Thrawn's Revenge, making defensive battles a bit easier in Fall of the Republic than they ought to have been. We also didn't have many era appropriate stations just yet. In point two, this has changed with the movement of all structures up one level for the CIS and Republic. This has meant the introduction of a new level one station, which is the Haven for the Republic, and the Trade Federation outpost for the CIS. The level 5 stations, rather than being the Golan 3 still, have been changed to the Valor for the Republic, and the Banking Clan defense platform from the Clone Wars cartoon in 2003. That's going to do it for today's video though, we're well into Fall of the Republic's beta, so a release date should be coming soon. There will likely be a few more topics covered in their own videos like this coming up, so make sure to subscribe here for more, or to check out the Discord linked in the description for information on mod news, releases, and the beta process. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time.